Okay, uh, <laughs> I know I'm a day late to this, but I had a lot to do yesterday, so I didn't really have enough time to watch Falcon and Winter Soldier yesterday, but I watched it today, so let's do this. So this is, yeah, it's the Falcon and Winter Soldier, this is episode 3, Power Broker. It's kind of weird to feel how we're kind of, ha we're halfway through this, because... Again, six episodes, it's, and we're, all, we're already done with episode three, so we only have three episodes left to go before we see where all this leads. And I think because since this is six episodes, it does feel like a long move, a really long movie. I mean, don't get me wrong, WandaVision, you can argue WandaVision could have been a really long movie too, but this one, since it's only six episodes, really feels like a long movie, so... Uh, overall, I thought it was really good. I thought we're continuing to go in the right direction, in my opinion, for the show, for what I was expecting. <laughs> Man, there, yeah, there's just a lot in this episode. And it makes sense because, you know, we're at the point, because the, fir the first thing we do in this episode is... We go to Zemo, which is pretty much where we left the last episode off. So, we're, because Sam and Bucky need information about who, you know, what's up with the Flag Smashers and the Super Soldier Serum and all that. So, of course, they go to Zemo for information, and it makes sense that Zemo would help him out. And <laughs> it's so, I mean, I've seen so many people say, yeah, it's this, this the opening with Sam, I mean, with Bucky and Zemo in that cell, it's so Silence of the Lambs. It's just like, but it, but it's more creepy with um, Zemo. At first, he's in the shadows, and you and you just hear him reciting the the words that that triggers the Winter Soldier, and you just see Bucky just standing there. He's not even phased by it this time. And you see, but Zemo in the shadows is saying them, and then he leans, then he lean, then he leans into the light, and it's so creepy. It's so cool, and I really like what they do with them in this show because it's interesting. Because did they say whether or not he got dusted? I don't know. Well, I mean, because regardless, he's been sitting in a cell for a long time, and he, and I like how he even compares it to Bucky. He's like, unlike you, I've had to, I've actually, I've had to sit here. For all this time so <laughs> it's a bit an interesting concept and that's the other thing i kind of like about zemo is he's basically an anti-villain in this right now because the only thing he's after is taking down the super soldiers making sure the super soldier serum ne is never reproduced and that and maybe take down power power broker we i mean i imagine he that's kind of his target maybe too but Right now, his main focus is just taking down Carly and the Flash and Flag Smashers and making sure the Super Soldier Serum is never reproduced. So, yeah, he's basically the enemy of my enemy. He's my friend in this situation because both Z because Zemo, Sam, and Bucky are all after the same thing. It's just that they have their intentions. And obviously, Sam is not on board to work with Zemo. And I love... I love how they work around, like, how do they actually get Zemo to work with them, because Bucky and Sam are talking about it, and it's, and it's like, are, is part of the episode, is, is part of this episode going to be breaking Zemo out of prison? And, then, like, Sam, like, is starting to say, okay, okay, listen, this, if we're going to do, he's basically saying what he did, but he's spinning it as is, like, this is what we're going to do. But Sam, I mean, I mean, Bucky, Bucky talks about that. But then Sam's like, wait a minute, where's, where, wait, what? And then, yeah, so basically, they show everything Bucky did to get Zemo out of prison, but like I said, Bucky spun it like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. But in reality, that's what he already did. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, and even, Z I mean, I love the banter between the three. Like, and there's like, there's like, there's one moment where Zemo's like, if I may, and then both Sam and Bucky are just like, shut up. And then Zemo's just like, fair enough. <laughs> But again, it's like, it's Zemo, so you know something is gonna be interesting, you know something's gonna be up with this guy, and yeah, they throw, they, you, I kind of, you kind of 
underestimate him at the start because you think because based off of civil war you think oh this is just a simple man who lost his family and has been plotting since age of ultron to get revenge this episode shows that he's not just a simple man <laughs> he's in fact rich he's got a private jet he's got he's got servants he's got connections he knows every he knows more he's got he's got a lot of things he's obviously he's got a he's got a classic trench coat he's got a he's got his mask of course which is obviously from the comics and i mean if he gets a sword that'll be cool he, i mean i can see the excuse i mean he's rich so he can make it easily just say hello oh, i've learned defense but obviously i feel like fencing he could not be like oh i've learned defense but you know what's the point of pointing what's the point of poking someone with a sword when you can slash them with it i don't know but so pretty much yeah part of the episode is them working together and having to figure out where the super soul su serum came from who power broker is and how exactly the flag smashers got their hands on all this stuff and we get a few things uh, along with that uh the start we do get those ideologies between the three like sam like when like one for one one example is when they're talking about cap when cap's brought back up like bucky has his view of like of steve you know he's like steve, he's like he's like that shield may not mean mean it may not mean something to you but it means something to me he's like that he's like he, you know because steve was his friend he trusted him he was he believed in him and steve in return believed in him whereas sam you know sam didn't know steve as long as bucky but he grew a connection he understood steve he but he felt but he looked to steve like he was he was perfect and of course that would make sense why he would think that because you know all he knew steve as was captain america whereas bucky knew steve before steve took the serum he knew how loyal steve was as a person he knew what steve was like personality wise before he became captain america and then captain america can just express that but he was just given a seemingly perfect personality and that's where zemo comes in saying how once someone is given a title like a is given the fame mp or a symbol like people immediately immediately ignore the flaws of that person and of course all three of them are kind of right in those terms like you know one person's like from what i've known of this person i could never live up to that another person's like from what i've known of this person i respect him and i believe if he says you're the next, if you're the next Captain America, then you're the next Captain America. And then the other one being like, well, what's the, well, it, it's the, uh, the title is stupid enough because everyone's got flaws. But once a person's given a title, people just forget about the flaws that that person has. So, and that's kind of all revolving around John Walker's Captain America. Because one of the first things Walker does in this episode is he breaks into the one of the, buildings that Carly and her crew hid in and she, and he 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 doesn't care like he 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 tries to be intimidating he um and of course he tries to use the Captain America card to his advantage he's like do you know who I am and the guy's like I do I don't care <laughs> I don't respect you and that's the thing is you know when Steve was Captain America he didn't have to say he was Captain America he didn't have to be intimidating he just came in and he he gave people if he had to give a ration of someone he would you know he would try to he would try to give them respect try to connect try to understand them if he could if he couldn't that's when he would do it but in john walker in this case he just goes straight to okay you're a bad guy so i'm gonna try and get the information out of you either by saying i'm captain america so you should automatically respect me or you know talk to the shield i guess <laughs> So, but, you know, he's, and of course he's like, it sounds like he's really, he, it's, I don't know, it's interesting to see this character, because you kind of are questioning, wait a minute, is he doing this so he could hold his title as Captain America, or is he doing it because he's just a big, he's just a big jerk? Be you know, it's like, you got that dynamic going on, because we've, we had seen, we had the scene with him, like, you know, being really nervous about being Cav, you know, wanting to, 
to help his country, wanting to do what's right. But then we also had the scenes of like him basically being that jerk. He's like, I'm Captain America, baby. So stay out of my way. Yeah. So, um, Madripoor. That was also a pretty cool thing. Uh, that's from the comics. I didn't, I didn't, I don't... I'm not, I didn't read that many comics related to the X-Men because, I mean, I know that's where usually where Madripoor is associated with and, um, usually <laughs> that's what it is, but in this case, um, it's obviously not, it's more, it's for this, is you know, Zemo, Falcon, and Bucky, you know, they all go there, they learn a little bit more about how the Super Soldier Serum came into play, obviously with Power Broker and Dr. Nagel, who... <laughs> God, this guy, this doctor, he, he's not in this episode for a lot, for a while. He's not in this episode for long, but God, he really gets under your skin with how he talks about his work. Like he, he refers to himself as a God. He literally, he, like he, re he referenced Isaiah as a test subject, not a, this, not like actual person. He literally just looks that he does he because again he he sees himself as a god so he just looks at everyone underneath him literally as everyone underneath him he doesn't care he because he's like i he he technically did what the doctor from captain america the first avenger did but you know, i like oh, that's the other thing i like how it's not they're not saying i did my own th i created this myself no he's like i took what this doctor did and perfected it he's like he, he he's he's acknowledging that he's like I took what, you know, he's like, this doctor did with Steve Rogers, what the Americans, what we've been trying to do for over 80 years now. Yeah, or 80 years, now, about 80 years, and I've perfected it. And of course, they're like, well, if you were for the government, why are you here? And he's like, well, obviously, well, five years ago, <laughs> that happened. So he's pretty much just, he, he, he pretty, you know, like he's gone for five years, he comes back, the project that he was working on shut down, so it obviously makes sense that he would want to continue it, because it's like, it, it's, it, it would literally be like, one day you're working on something that is life-changing, and then the next day you're told, up, oh, it's shut down, we're never gonna work on it again, goodbye, <laughs> so, yeah, and then, Made sense, and then of course, and I get it kind of made sense that Zemo would just up and shoot him because he, like I said, he doesn't want any more super soldiers, so he basically kills the one thing that created these. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like if you ever create a, if you ever create a serum that could give people strength, speed, agility, all that, and you basically make him a superhero, then you're most likely gonna die because people are like, we don't need that so yeah and of course they find all this information out by first they go you know they go into the they go into the main match report which is god it was so john wick when they're when their cover is blown the the person they were talking to gets killed and then all of a sudden the bounty there's just a bounty on their heads and it's just like everyone everyone's trying to kill them but they're saved by sharon carter who doesn't sound like it sounds like she's been around for for the five years so she's been just dealing with it because like she said i mean she's, she's been on the run for so long she pretty much doesn't care about the government she just is like she's like I, she's like what i did where, where, where i am now you know it's like i'm on the run what's the for you know she basically doesn't give partially but but Sam is able to, like, convince her to help him out by saying, if you help us figure out all this, then I will, I'll get you back. I'll get you back into the government. And I'm like, are you sure they can hold up that offer? I mean, technically speaking, you guys are, you, could, you can easily be enemies of the state. Or the, yeah, because enemies of the country, if we're being more honest. Because John Walker can easily say, those two guys are criminals, get them, because... As they mentioned, you know, because when Zemo breaks down, they're like, wait a minute, they Bucky and Sam were here the same day Zemo broke out. So they're like, okay, put it pieces together. I mean, obviously Walker's like, they're desperate, they're just as desperate as we are. And it makes sense because, you know, they have to look for any possible leads. And so right now they, um, after, you know, after they find the lab where Nagel is and they get the information that they need, Zemo kills him. 
And then, obviously, since they have bounties on their head, they get attacked by a lot more hunter bounty hunters. We lead to a really cool battle at the docks, which I... It's, it's, it's definitely the most grounded fight compared to the first episode and the second episode. Note, I like how the first episode, it's, a, it's an aerial battle that goes into the canyons. And then the second episode, it's a battle, it's a battle on truck, on top of trucks and like Sam is like flying around too. And now we just have a straight down grounded battle in the docks. <laughs> I love the, I love how the, the, the changes of the changes of altitude and the changes of locations is just so funny. Um, uh, we get to see Sharon do do uh, man the, man there was a, there were a, there was a lot of good fight moment uh, fighting uh, choreography in this I mean and there's even in, like a few jokes too like it's like you were so, why did, I thought you would go left no I was gonna go this way and this thing went everyone what did I get and then just keep bickering and then my favorite line of all that is when Sam just screams it's in every action movie and I'm like oh, freaking heck. <laughs> But um, we also get to see Zemo do some action. Um, he's obviously more brains than bronze. Like he, he's able to wipe out a whole group of guys just by shooting a fuel tank. I think yeah, I think it was a fuel tank or gas or a uh, gas pipe, and it just blew up. Uh, he is able to. He uses a person as a human shield to take out another dude, and obviously, and yeah, it's like he he's he's for now a pretty solid ally but again we kind of know it's not gonna always be that as like sam mentioned before like you know zemo framed you for killing the king of wakanda you think they forgot about that <laughs> and he's like that's a rhetorical question and yeah that's kind of the episode ends with bucky you know with a person from wakanda and they're there for zemo so obviously <laughs> Because, again, like, you know, with Zemo out of prison, Sam and Bucky both know it's like, okay, we, once we get everything out of you, once we capture Carly, once we make sure all this is done for good, you're going back to jail. So, obviously, Zemo is probably going to be planning a way to get out. I imagine when the series is over, he'll maybe be on the run. Maybe he'll be back. I mean, because, again, Baron Zemo from the comics, he as an act for sometimes outsmarting them. So he most likely will outsmart him in this, and I won't be surprised if that happens. And then Carly, I really, I I understand her character growth. But I, I don't know, I guess they're giving us a lot, and I, and I like that. I like how we're trying to, they're sympathizing. You know, we're trying to, you know, we see why she's doing this. We see how she's doing it. We understand that she's doing this for a cause. She really cares about the people she's trying to help and the people that she's with but she doesn't care about those who basically don't care and she shows that by blowing up a building filled with these guards and men that they tied up and i'm like okay that's pretty that's pretty gruesome and it's like not surprising because i mean because like she's been she's been progressing into, into this you know it's like and she even says, like, this is the only way language they speak of. They speak. And I'm like, okay, yeah. But uh, then um, I hope they, I hope this buildup is good because they've been talking a lot about power, power Broker, but we haven't seen him yet. Now, from the comics, this guy, from the mo for the most part, is just like a businessman, but he obviously has a lot of power when it comes to the green, so... I'm interested to see just how he'll be introduced, who will play him, or if it's even a he. Like, I've, there's been theories going around, like, like how, uh, what if, what if Jaren's power broker, or something like that, obviously. I don't, I don't know, based on this episode, maybe I can definitely see Sharon being that, but at the same time, I feel like Sharon wouldn't, I feel like Sharon wouldn't have let Zemo shoot Nagel. I mean, I know she wasn't in the room. Yeah, she wasn't in the room with them. Like, she basically was like, okay, go, go, go find Nagel. I'll stay out here and make sure nothing goes wrong. So, and even Carly mentions it. Like, now that the Doctor's dead, she and the other 20 people are all they have left of the super soldier team so power broker is most likely if he wants to continue with this thing he's going to come back and be literally be begging for them or at least try and catch them you know and that's so 
they so Carly knows they're better they're better alive than dead. So who knows? All this is really interesting, really intriguing, and I'm really excited to see where we go from here. Again, I thought the actions I again I I don't know. I mean I feel like man, this is interesting because for his one division, you know, you knew based off the trailers it was gonna be can't be corny cheesy with how it was gonna go, but yeah, obviously they were dropping these little hints of a mystery, and, I, and as the series went on, it became more and more epic, and then eventually we had the finale with the, you know, Agatha, Agatha versus Wanda, Vision versus White Vision, and then the director of sword who i completely forgot his name of because everyone for pretty much forgot his name because man was that guy a complete waste i just hope that doesn't happen in this one i hope like because right now our been our three are Z, right now our two we have Z, our three are zemo carly and the flag smashers and power broker obviously Z, because we we all know zemo is most likely going to be turning on sam and bucky eventually because I doubt he's gonna, you know, we, you know, it's gonna happen. You know it. Carly obviously is the main focus right now. And I feel, again, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like, I don't know. Maybe we should get more of her. Maybe if like, maybe once we finally, like, I mean, we did have the fight with her on top of the truck in the second episode, but maybe like once they finally meet up again and they start, interacting off of one another and start bantering or maybe they start fighting again you know maybe that's when they can build up the character again i i think it's when they interact with the hero when the hero and villain interact with one another and that's the other thing it's not hero villain in this really because you look at what carly is doing and you're like yeah you can understand why she's doing it you look at why you look at zemo and you're like yeah you understand why he has this mindset you might understand why sam has his mindset why bucky has his mindset oh yeah john walker i guess he's also technically another villain in this but yeah that's the other thing about john walker you don't you don't fully understand his mindset right now there's kind of like it's it's really seesawing back and forth between like is he really a sympathetic guy or is he just some bully he's he's like a bull he's a, he's one of the best soldiers but he's a bully again this kind of going back to the first avenger with captain america like why did steve get the serum he wasn't he was like the least he was the least valuable can't a cadet he was the least valuable soldier on that in the army why did they pick him because he had heart he was he was willing to stand up for the little guy that it's you know again it all goes back to like it's what's inside that makes the person value you know the strongest and so for walker everything he is you know they say he's one of the best soldiers in the army okay but what does that mean in terms of his care of his personality like that's the thing it's like who knows and again it's like they're building a power broker i really i really hope there's a good payoff with the guy i mean or her again if they do if they do a sharon carter twist i feel like that would be a little too obvious right now then again we did have the agatha twist that i yeah okay it could go it, we know who knows okay um yeah i think that's all i have for this episode so Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm excited for the second half of this. I really am. So, see ya.